gang, 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 gangster. No! Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. This took significantly less time to review than the first season. I can celebrate that. Hey guys, this is my review for All Hell Breaks Loose Part 2, the season finale. This was the first actual season finale to have Carry On My Wayward Son as the the road so far, first ever time using that. In season one, it was the pre-season finale recap, whereas in this one, it started the trend that has been consistent ever since and leading up to the eventual end of this show, whenever that's happening. This episode is a continuation from All Hell Breaks Loose Part 1, and there's two things I definitely have got to say. The directing is night and day between those two episodes. Part one is directed by Robert Singer, and it's a decently directed episode, but Kim Manners directs the second part, and his effort, his workmanship, just outshines Singer's in every way. Manners is a much better visual storyteller. He uses the techniques that he trademarked and really exceptionally displayed in the X-Files, and he brings that into this ultimate strife, and he really gets the most out of the actors, even when some of the circumstances are a little bit rushed. We see Dean is just at the edge of it. He's looking at his dead brother, and he doesn't know what to do with himself, which is kind of awkward when Bobby walks in with a bucket of chicken and says, hey, I thought you might need this. I know you're mourning over your dead brother, who's right there, but you should eat this. Oh, so we should probably bury him. It's a little bit of a kind of a weird trip. After they get over this hurdle, the episode starts. We see Yellow Eyes' plan with Jake. We see that Jake is easily manipulated. We see that he's just gonna go along with Yellow Eyes' plan, which actually is the only problem I have with this episode. And because while they try to develop Jake as a villainous character in this episode, they try to kind of display his turn over to accepting of Yellow Eyes, it just happens too quickly. There's not enough development. You know how I got pissed off when they tried to make God a villain in like the last 20 minutes of Supernatural, really the last 10 minutes of season 14? Jake almost has the exact same amount of screen time in terms of going evil. We have three scenes with him. We have him having the conversation with Yellow Eyes. The Yellow Eyes says, I'll make your sister and mom eat themselves. So you better do what I want to say. The second time we see Jake is when he's at the train tracks and the other wise is like, here, take the gun. And while I'm nitpicking on this part, I do gotta give credit to the actor who played Yellow Eyes. Every single scene he's in, in this second season, is fantastic. And this is actually probably my favorite exchange of his, is when he hands him the gun, because he's like, this is the only gun that can kill me, and Jake turns it around on him. Oh my, how could I have not seen this unforeseen events? He then says, hey, I could make you rich and powerful. And Jake's like, hmm. And then the third time we see him is when they're at the door, he's developed Jedi mind tricks faster than Rey developed invincibility in all of her Jedi powers and he just goes full evil and that is my nitpick is that Jake just doesn't get enough time however there isn't really any time you could put that development into because the focus is so much on Dean making the deal to bring his brother back and that's a central point that is actually far more important than Jake even though Jake is actually the one who brings about this mini little apocalypse going back to Dean and Sam the interaction with Dean and Sam's corpse is one of my favorite pieces of acting from Jensen in this whole season we already had what is and what should never be But this is just so good too, because we get this raw emotion from him where he's talking about old memories with his brother and then he says, What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Quick cut to him getting in the car and driving off. You're like, what is he going to do? Comes up to that crossroad and you're like, oh shit. As they start to play out the deal, We work all the way down to a year. And little did I know when I watched this episode what was going to transpire because holy shit, I did not expect what would happen in season three to happen when they did this deal. But he makes the deal one year for Sam's life. Comes back, Sam's kind of a little bit interested in the fact that he got full on stabbed in the spinal cord. They kind of catch up on what happened and then they go to Bobby's house and Bobby gives Dean this look, this 
absolute look of what the fuck did you do? Then this leads to my next favorite scene in this episode. While I said that Bobby was kind of a little bit odd bringing in the bucket of chicken with the corpse on the table, the acting here between Dean and Bobby is so good because Bobby is just filled with rage, but he's also filled with sorrow because Dean is following along the path of his father. Oh, it's such good chemistry between the two. It's such a great scene. The, the emotion between the two actors is fantastic. Jensen once again being like, I had to do it. He's my baby brother. Mm. Really good writing too. Definitely give Kripke good points for doing really great writing in this episode. Sarah Gamble wrote part one and she did a pretty decent job, but Obviously, Kripke is just like nah, 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 nailing it, except for Jake. But unfortunately, he was just kind of caught in that corner with that. Then Ellen kind of just appears. And they find out that there is this super devil's trap made out of train tracks on this one graveyard, which just so happens to be a gate to hell. This is actually something that's not entirely explained. I kind of wonder what this door was. Maybe they might talk about it more in season three. It's been a while since I've seen season three, so hopefully that might get cleared up a bit, but it is a little bit of an awkward kind of, hey, did you realize we had this incredibly destructive and dangerous door right here. They go to the cemetery and they have this final standoff and coming back once again to Jake, it's the weakest point. He is the weakest part of this entire episode. And this episode itself is pretty strong and his performance, despite what he's given, is still pretty decent. And he's gone on to have a little bit more of a successful career. I know he was in Black Mirror. You gotta give him credit too because he's been only introduced in the previous episode. We see him taking this big step as this kind of relatable antagonistic character. The first two scenes of him in this episode are kind of having us sort of relate, sort of re being remorseful for the character as to why he's doing what he does. And then the third one, he just goes pure evil. So he, it feels like we missed this step into what made him go all the way. Again, it's like the only negative, but they couldn't really have done anything else. I don't know what they could have done except maybe extend the episode, but with time constrictions, they are obviously kind of put into a corner and there's nothing that I could say that could have been cut. Nothing could have been shortened down to add this part in without feeling it being no more than like a minute, if that. Jake opens up the door after being able to almost make Helen kill herself and Sam fully blows him away. I thought that this was actually a little bit of a tidbit thing that just wasn't addressed again, really. But thinking about it now, when Yellow Eyes says to Dean, do you think that who you brought back is 100% Sam? It really doesn't come into play in season three at all, but season three had its own issues with it being in the writer strike and the fact that it's as decent as it is, is pretty impressive considering all things. And it's much more of a central story, but that's when I start reviewing season three. This is playing in to Sam becoming who he's supposed to become leading into season five. I didn't really realize that until just now, and I'm, I'm pretty certain that's the insinuation that's going on here, but it's still a pretty cool little prelude. Gate is open and like one of the most expensive visual effects of all the demons flying up at the screen is like, whoa. Then they have the standoff with yellow eyes. It's a pretty cool standoff. You totally think they're totally screwed. And then all of a sudden John Winchester comes in as a ghost. And while the scene is cool, and while even though they don't say a word to each other, you see it all in their emotions. The fact that they had to shoot this in a studio and do terrible green screen work, there's a reason why they're so close in on the actor's face is because the green screen work is terrible. And I'm trying to remember the commentary now, but I think that there was a scheduling issue. They had to reshoot the scene or because Jared had hurt himself, he wasn't able to be there. So to try and make it all natural, they had to reshoot it again. They couldn't bring John back too for the scenes that Sam had to shoot. So that's why they did it this way. It, 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 it's awkward. It's unfortunate too, because it's such a great scene. Nothing said, but all visually told. Then they shoot Yellow Eyes with again, the other coolest shot in this entire show. And then Dean gets to say that was for our mom, you son of a bitch. Sam unfortunately finds out why he is alive, but he promises to help Dean. That's a very short conversation too. And again, like I said, they're really trying to cram in as much as they can without making it feel over bloated. And the episode ends with the exact same shot, albeit Dean saying the line instead of Sam. 
them. That was the end of the pilot. And that is All Hell Breaks Loose Part 2. It's a fantastic episode. It has great tension, it has great writing, it has great character moments, it has great emotion. The only negative is that the secondary antagonist character just doesn't get enough time to fully develop himself. And that is my one complaint, and it's actually the only reason why I'm not gonna give this episode a seven. Jake just brings it down just a little bit. It's not this perfection, it's not this perfect episode. And that's why I'm gonna give All Hell Breaks Loose a six out of seven. It's still an exceptional. If I did like a 0.5, I would give it a 6.5, but I don't do that. Obviously, I asked you guys for your comments about this episode, so let's see what you guys had to say. So going back to a comment that was in the what is and what should never be episode review, All Hell Breaks Loose Part 2, I like for some more great acting from Jensen in the first part of the episode. The rest of the episode is fine, but not my favorite season ending for me, even though it put Azazel behind them. Oh wow, 200 demons escaped. Seems so not eventful compared to the future apocalypses. And I, yes, I'll agree with that too. Um, the stakes that happen at the end, it kind of just seems like it's a lot of demons. Okay. At the time, considering how difficult it was to obviously defeat a demon, it was a big threat, but it was kind of oddly placed in terms of what it meant. It just meant there was more demons to face, but this was like the super demon, so it had the image of a big threat at the time, but obviously further events have completely demitigated this. I will agree with that. That part has not aged the best. All Hell Breaks Loose Part 2 is an excellent finale. There are some great moments from Dean, including a heartbreaking monologue from Jensen in, in the brothers' conversation at the end. Great job providing resolution for the brothers avenging Mary while also setting up the premise for Season 3. The ending does well to, to bring some suspense in Dean's impending death, along with glimpses into Sam's corruption from demon blood and Dean's self-loathing slash suicidal tendencies. This ending also really cements the boys in the hunter life. Up until now, they've only really cared about the personal vendetta for their mom. With her father's mission complete, it's now more about saving each other and accepting a greater role to protect the world. I can't wait for season three, probably my top season. That's cool, because that is it's also my top season. My only critiques for this episode is that I still think Jake's willingness to turn to the dark side is very forced and unbelievable. And I think the threat the demon makes to end Sam's life if they attempt to save Dean doesn't hold water when the entirety of season three is all about a way of finding a way out. But overall, a well-placed, engaging episode, and though the whole secret keeping trope is overused now, I approve of the dramatic element for this instance alone. This is not the first time there's been a real secret because Dean had the secret that their father told them at the beginning of season two, but yeah, I, I see what you mean now, this beginning of this overused trope. Jake's willingness was just too much. As for the threat that the demon says, I think they had to do that because otherwise you needed to figure out some means of putting Dean in this kind of impossible situation, which just made season three all the more enjoyable because the whole time you're kind of just wondering how the hell is he gonna get out of this? And that's what I liked about that threat. I loved All Hell Breaks Loose Part 2. It was a nice ending for the first two seasons, killing Yellow Eyes and their dad escaping hell and going to heaven, which has kind of technically been confirmed, but at the same time, I don't know. Sam and Dean get that moment with their dad also, and that scene where Bobby is just glaring at Dean when he sees Sam alive. Dean can't even look Bobby in the eye. It was kind of intense. Yep, no, it's great. Like I said, after the bucket of chicken incident, Bobby gets a lot better. <laughs> in my opinion, All Hell Breaks Loose Part 2 is definitely better than Part 1. It was interesting all the way through. I love the acting in the episode, especially the conversation with Dean and Bobby. I love the ending as well, and it segues perfectly into Season 3. Yes, it does. It they, I, I'm very, very excited going into season three. For part two, great moments and insights to the beginning of the end for me. Uh, Dean's numerous emotional scenes are great. Sam's showing some dark side. Jeffrey Dean Morgan appearing. Yellow eyes, good stuff. But the crossroad deal leads to the stuff that killed the show for me. Die, make a deal, come back, cheat the deal, die again, anyway, repeat. It just became too much of the same thing over and over, at least the second EG in this season alone. That death means fuck all in this show. Overall, I like the finale, bad omens and all. Yeah, Mark's right here with the amount of times that death just became completely ridiculous, obviously in the show's lifetime. I feel that season three works well, especially with the mystery spot episode, just giving Sam just that horrible, horrible living nightmare of seeing his brother die over and over again. And after season five, yeah, the amount of times that the characters have been brought back obviously doesn't mean anything anymore. I think it's because I watched this live and I watched it as it was coming out, week by week, month by month, that's how I'm able to remember these moments and these seasons and that's what makes them so prominent and so enjoyable to me. If you watch this in as a normal kind of binge watch, 
yeah, I think it wouldn't have nowhere near the amount of effect that it did, but especially when we get to the end of season three, holy shit, that episode still scars me. And this episode is where the Winchester trope of keeping secrets from each other begins. Well, it already started with what their dad had said, but yeah, I get where you're going. But unlike years to come, where it was for dramatic purposes only, this one actually pushes the plot forward in the next season. Kind of a dull episode for me. I do remember the iconic slow-mo shot of the cult, which got too overused in later seasons. Well, they've done... Oh, man, I don't even know. I thought they could never afford doing this again. And John's ghost returning from hell to save his boys, which kind of opened a plot hole for future seasons, exactly, where he's suddenly safe in heaven with Mary at the end of season 14. I digress. I'm looking forward to you reviewing the next season because it's the best season next to season 8 in this show. Oh, really? Oh, I like JJ really likes season 8. I feel that season 3 is my favorite one. Season 5 is the best one, but season 3 is my favorite one. Anyways, those are the comments. Thank you guys again for all of your reviews, for watching me review all of season two. Admittedly, I did start off fast and then I kind of petered off at the beginning of the year, but obviously everything with this has helped me. Season three is 16 episodes. By that logic, I could watch two episodes a week and be done in eight weeks. I'm gonna try and do three. It depends on how long this COVID thing lasts. Obviously, season two review is gonna be coming up. Also, I'm gonna be doing list videos. I'm gonna be doing my top five best episodes and my top five worst episodes for both season one and two. Season two is gonna be hard. There's no worst episode. It's like one bad one. So it's gonna kind of more so be like the least best episodes. But thank you guys again for joining me on this adventure. And I guess maybe if you want, give me your guys' thoughts on where you think season two places in the core five seasons and what makes season two stand out from other seasons, what you like about season two, what like are some detractors from it. And those who've got really good insightful comments, I'll read those off when I do my season two review. Anyways, thank you guys once again for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.